No doubt churches are looking very different this Christmas season. COVID-19 forcing them to make some really tough decisions as the state pointed the finger at large gatherings, including worship, saying they were behind large amounts of COVID cases. Now they're trying to figure out how to worship without putting their members at risk. Fox 8's Michael Hennessy looked into this, joins us now. Michael, the largest churches and the smallest all facing the same challenges. Neil, that said, it seems like the larger the congregation, the tougher it is to face those challenges, even with all the resources they have. Pandemic fatigue, we're all eager to be together. Senior Pastor Jill Duffield leads a church with 2,400 members. First Presbyterian Church, Greensboro. I think the question that many of us are asking is how long is this going to last? The capacity of the building, about half that. Oh, it's probably about 1,200. <laughs> so it is a bit of a strange feeling. But the most people she's had in there at one time, she says, is maybe 15 people because she just started here at the beginning of the month and says not being able to gather for important rituals is challenging. I think I anticipated that, but I think the grief around that is is pretty palpable. You can really feel the disappointment and sadness about that. The original plan for Christmas Eve was to have very limited in-person worship, but that got nixed before she even got there. We kept joking at staff meeting because Christmas Eve was on the agenda over and over again. So it was like Christmas Eve 3.0, Christmas Eve 4.0. They thought about using a radio transmitter to have people gather outside, but ultimately landed on a very simple service on Zoom and a recorded service using some stuff from last year. Splicing in a new sermon and communion liturgy. The early Christian church, they, they met in homes. So in some ways, we're going back to the beginning. I understand and know that hope is present. Pastor Willie Funderburk of Mount Olivet AME Zion Church knows firsthand why these adjustments are so important. I would go to the welcome the chair to the bathroom. I couldn't breathe like a bag over my head. He fought COVID at home for a few days, but ended up having to go to the hospital. My blood pressure kept going up. They could never get it down. His church has about 60 members, and their service was Sunday outdoors through speakers. So the members would stay in their cars. Um, I'll have a podium out there. We deliver the word. Communion given out in bags safely. I'm going to try to take it easy. My members say take it easy. Don't give, give 15 minutes, Pastor. Just take it easy. So we're going to try to do that. Even though they're smaller, the pandemic has helped them reach hundreds of people with his words getting out to the people in three neighborhoods surrounding the church. It ranges for, for hundreds, several hundreds. And many of them will come up and tell us they're in their houses or the windows are open, the doors are open. Two grants also allowing them to do several food giveaways, allowing this congregation of 60 people to also feed hundreds. Thank you so much, sir. So it was exciting that, again, to see how many people we serve, how many families we touched. Serving three times this month with 200 boxes of vegetables and meats not being enough for everyone who showed up. Lift up your hands. That Sunday Christmas service, Thunderbirk's first since catching the virus. In the hope that is set before us. We are all children of God. We're all united. And so we're called to take care of each other. Duffield doesn't think First Presbyterian will be doing anything in person until at least April, around the time of another major holy day. It is going to be like Easter. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic because we will be able to be together. We'll be able to sing together. Saying one of the blessings of this time is it's reminded us just how much being together matters. Maybe sometimes we've taken that for granted. And I don't think we're going to do that. Not for a while anyway. And Duffy will be doing that Zoom from her home with her family. Funderburk wants to remind people, even if they can't join them for services, they are broadcast on their radio channel. That is 88.9. Neil. All right, Michael.